of these curricula. But what I would say is, essentially the domains that curricula focus about are knowledge and demonstration and evidence such as uh, workplace-based assessments. Now, knowledge is something that I think the whole problem or the issue that is facing a lot of the trainees is the attendance bit, as in acquiring the, the skill and experience, particularly when it comes to chronic pain through the clinics and the intervention lists. Knowledge, there is a way around it, and I'll come to that. It's just the acqu acquisition of skills and clinical experience. Um, these are the, this is sort of the crux of what it is. And then come COVID-19, I mean, we used to have very, very busy intervention lists, a lot of clinics, there are eight of us. And then come COVID-19 and cessation of elective activities, pain clinics, pain lists, all gone. Um, and everyone is trying to get their minimum requirements for signature, which used to be before 20 sessions for intermediate trainees. And everyone wants to have the unit of training signed, even if they, I know that some people don't want to ever come to the chronic pain clinic again. Some of them find it quite difficult, um, uh, challenging patients, quite interesting. And everyone is worried about getting signed which is quite understandable. There are very uncertain times. No one knows. It's uncertainty and challenges and everywhere. How long is it going to last? What's going to happen? How are we going to get signed off? How are we, gonna, are we ever going to see a pain clinic? Now, what I would say is there is a recognition of that. The Faculty of Pain Medicine has issued guidance very early on in the pandemic. That was 25th of March. And I like it. And you know, we're just nice people, and the faculty, our faculty cares. It's not only training, it's your well-being, believe it or not. Okay, that matters to them. So it's a guidance about how pain training is going to be affected all in all stages, including, and there's special guidance in that the advanced pain trainees people like Arul and uh, Manish, our victims, you know, people that we abuse for a year and exploit in our research. And these people are, there's guidance particularly to them. And essentially, if you read through that guidance, and I'm not gonna bore you or accept, expect you to read through that, but the salient points are, first of all, there is recognition. They understand that there are gonna be difficulties they recognize that the lists have gone down, our intervention lists. They recognize and understand that the necessities of the time being dictate that a lot of you trainees are gonna be pulled out of even when there are remote clinics and when there are acute pain round, ward rounds, you're gonna be pulled out of that to help with the pandemic. And what they're saying is they wanna reassure you, do not worry. Do not stress there. We understand and recognize. And the emphasis is not on stretching anybody or extending their training. We will provide support. And that is all those who do not necessarily only pain consultants at basic level and intermediate level. If you read the curriculum, you find the basic level is mostly about recognition of pain, pharmacology of pain, how to manage acute pain, mostly around acute pain. When you come to intermediate, you get more of the chronic pain flavor, yeah? And you get a bit more of um, attending clinic, a bit more details about neuropathic pain, but it is essentially, that's what it says in the curriculum. The first line is building on skills that you've acquired in basic. So essentially a lot of that can be delivered by non-pain consultants. Any consultant that you work on in the list should or could help you with acute pain questions or case-based discussions about how you can manage patients' pain. We are doing a lot of elective cancer lists. Where we do a lot of trauma. So there are lots of um, pain scenarios, real life pain scenarios, and you guys are going to the ward, you're, there are epidurals here, there, and everywhere. So there is a way that you can be supported with teaching, even though the 
chronic pain service per se is not running. So as I say, the faculty recognizes the limitations, they understand the concerns and the, the concerns of the trainees and the demands of the service. They would like to assure you that we'll extend all support and we are all encouraged to work support, to support you, not only as pain consultants, but as consultants in, in general, because we are all at a training, training hospital involved in training. And the advice is for all consultants, all trainees, to do just what you've done, to approach the pain consultants, particularly Dr. Bayani and myself, to try and see how you can get your training optimized. And as always, it had been, I mean, we have been, we have been evolving from a number-based um, training or quantity to competence. So now we're gonna emphasize on competence, gaining competence. An example would be if we come for, to the uh, chronic pain uh, cohorts, for example, like Arul and Manish, there are certain procedures that they need to have seen once or twice. No one expects them to do them 20 times, but at least they, they have, if they see the procedure, if they know that they can do it, at least they would have seen it once. And if they do it, because someone will get the knack of something in two times, some will take 20. So it's more an emphasis on competence now. There are lots of acute pain interventions that are still occurring and happening. Spinals, like left clad and center for cancer pain. Uh, we do uh, intrathecal opioids for cancer. This could lead to, well, you can have a DOPS, you can have a, a case-based discussion. So there's lots of opportunities still out there, admittedly with a, with a reduction in the ability to deliver the chronic pain service side of things, but this is changing. And more important, you, not, you don't worry. Be happy and look after yourself. Don't worry. We all recognize your predicament. We all want to get you trained and signed. Do not worry about delays. There is a recognition and it's clearly stipulated that no one will have to suffer an extension of training because of failure to do numbers. Now, competence is a different thing. And that would have been the case even at times prior to COVID. If we felt that someone was incompetent, not that I've come across anybody at that stage in basement intermediate training with regards to pain, but if it was felt that they're, say, CT2 or whatever, SC3, who could not perform a spinal on a cachectic man and repeatedly voiced concern about their abilities to manage acute pain when on call. Now, that's a different story, okay? Uh, but generally, do not worry about signature and about getting your units of training signed. I think the catchword, the catchphrase for the future, and not only with pain training, with everything that we're delivering, Sadiq and I are heavily involved in webinars, left, right, and center. I think we are now uh, approaching things that the catch word is to train flexibly. So we've got an evolving situation, try and maximize it and get what we need out of what is available, which is a lot, by the way, if you look at it in a different way. As I said, lots of lists, elective lists happening, long cases, lots of issues with pain, all of that could open the way to um, train trainees, even though a lot of people are exhausted, but we just have to bring it out of ourselves to discuss pain. Suggestions for how to tackle this situation, webinars, we've been doing a lot of these. What we are doing now is a prime example. One-to-one uh, -one on the shop floor teaching with pain consultants and non-pain consultants who we should, we will encourage and to ask and grill and sort of tease out uh, how to manage pain. Managing acute pain, plenty of opportunity. Uh, now that Sadiq and um, has restarted his remote clinics, I'm going to be restarting soon. I'm aware that probably Dr. Vasu. And occasionally, once we start, we are starting to do some pain lists. So if you want to go to Costa del Hinkley, where we're doing some of our pain lists now, if you want to trek there, okay? Not that I would encourage you necessarily, but it is an opportunity, okay? So things will come back and in a way, we will always fight your corner to get you the experience that you need because right now, a lot of you are actually getting experience or you will be getting more experience in certain things such as managing laparotomies, 
cancer patients with all that comes of it. So you could actually, we could, we will sit down with the, uh, with our colleagues and with Elaine and try to see what you have done more of and try to release you to get your sessions. Because the, as I said, we all re recognize that it's no fault of anybody's, apart from the bloody bat, okay, that started all this, but we all acknowledge that you need to get your training. So we can't, there are certain things that we can provide now, the educational, the knowledge side of things, such as today's Zoom uh, webinar, which is a teaching as you would have got had it been face to face. And the things that are difficult to address now, such as uh, pain clinics and pain sessions, which mm, probably will affect more the intermediate trainees, is something that we could tackle as we resume activities, particularly with the emphasis on competence and the emphasis on um, and the reduction in required numbers. So as I say, the catchword now, the future is training flexibly. So don't worry, that's what I was just reacting to a, a text message from Dr. Bayani. Don't worry, all of you, relax. We recognize and there is a will to help. We will meet you halfway. We acknowledge that they're changing and challenging times and we have to be innovative. And I have to say that it is a strong possibility that even as things normalize, I think the way we address teaching and, and will have changed. So we will find that probably we are reaching a larger audience and a wider audience with our innovative methods, perhaps to a better satisfaction than what it used to be before. And there should be a focus on acquiring knowledge and skills as much as possible within the current limitations. And that's the take home message. Great. Thank you so much, Thank you uh, Ahia.